go. Right. Okay, so um, I'm trying something new. I've got rubbish music for the background. Forgive me for that. Uh, there's no way around it at the minute, I don't think. I've, I've kind of looked into it and I don't want to get done um, on copyright. So I've just taken something from the YouTube library, which is copyright free. So if it gets annoying, I'll just turn it off. I just thought I'd stick something on because this could go on for a bit. It might not go on for too long. We'll see. Um, but it's better than complete silence, I guess. Well, you can let me know if it is or not. So I'm going to be cracking on with some beastmen today or bray herds, whatever you want to call them. Um, I've got loads to do still. I realised I've been painting an extra four or five models that I didn't really need to do. The unit is a unit of 30 and I'm painting 30 or 35, uh, 34 or 35. Um, and obviously that is wasting time because I've got so much to do. Oh, getting a bit of a clog here. Oh my god, no! Right, that is um, matte medium everywhere. There we go. I knew there was a clog coming as well. All right, um, this is a random one as well, so I, I don't even know how many people are, people are going to turn up for this. But uh, Ralph and Graham are both here, Donny Woods and Dave Doug and Coleman. So a few people already. A little bit of chat, obviously, because I'm painting the Bray Herds. Um, Dave is. Let's have a look. What were you saying? Something about Nurgle, and it's quite interesting. There we go. Uh, I've got a few in a box set, and surprise, surprise, they didn't come in an Age of Sigmar branded box. Just old Warhammer Fantasy box speak volumes. So I thought exactly the same. Uh, I was thinking, well, Beastmen are probably going to go. They're probably going to be one of the next armies to disappear. That's what I thought anyway. And I've spent the last few days while painting, listening to a lot of the... Realm, well, I've listened to eight of the Realmgate War audiobooks. And interestingly enough, the, the Bray Herds, the Beastmen, turn up in one of them. And it, it, it's almost like each one of those books is focused around one of the races in Warhammer. So, and, and well, I say one of them, they've done a few. They've done Iron Jaws are in there, Beastmen are in there, uh, Ghouls, uh, what are they called? Court of Ghouls, something. And the dead are, are huge in there, like Manfred and Nagash and um, Ark and the Black are in there. They're like main characters. Right, uh, other than that disastrous explosion at the beginning of there, I think we're good to go. Um, and I can actually get this up on screen. If anybody's interested in what I've been working on, let me turn this off studio mode so I can actually see what I'm showing on the screen actually. That will help. There we go. So these, this is the state I'm up to. I've done all the base coats, I've done the washers, which is practically Agrax Earthshade. There's only a, a different, I think I've used Drakenhof Nightshade uh, on the blue. However, I'm now doing all of the skin highlighting. So this is the first bit of highlighting I've done after the base colours and the wash have been done. So I'm going to show you some of the skin tones I've done just to make this project even more difficult and time consuming. I've done a, a varied amount of skin tones. So this one's not showing up very well, but it's like a greyish white, like an albino grey herd. I've also done like red in their eyes, which isn't showing up too much. It's around like, like our eyelids. I've done a, a glaze. I've got this darker skinned one. It's still like a, a reddish tone, but it's darker than the other ones that I've been doing. And then we've got this one, which is classed as rugged, rugged skin tone. So I think Phil this, leaked this on his show on Monday. I say leaked, it's not really, there's not much going off on it really. It's just the skin again, but that's my rugged. Then I've got this Zemisi Desert. It's quite a yellowy skin tone, but I quite like it. It's different. And I've done a lot of edge highlighting on the edges of the fingers, which I don't think it shows up too well on this, but most of these fingers have been edge highlighted on both sides of the fingers, just to make them pop that little bit more. Then, which one is this? Uh, this might be the Bestigor skin. So, rat skin or Bestigor skin. Very orangey. And then we've got two more. And then the new one is the one that I'm painting that I haven't done yet. So I've got two different 
blues and I've done a grey so the one on the left here is Mechanica standard grey going up to Administratum and you can see a bit clearer on that one all the edge highlighting around the fingers it's quite cartoony it's almost like a, a cell shaded style <clears throat> I tend to do that quite a bit when I do flesh tones I just paint in texture that isn't there some people love it some people absolutely hate it and I can understand like I switch between the two um, thoughts back and forth this one on the right is a dark reaper as a base color and then it goes up to I believe Thunderhawk blue but I quite like that one I wasn't too sure because <clears throat> geez need to clear my throat um, I wasn't too sure because obviously I'm going to be doing blue because these are going to be uh, going alongside Zinch in the doubles tournament so I wanted to make sure that I had blue in the army and it doesn't really look right for Beastmen. I don't think blue would be a colour that I would choose if I wasn't going to be using it alongside Zinch. I would much rather have gone with a red or a dark uh, brown and just kept them really barbarian looking. So that is all of the skin tones I have done so far. I think I've got about 10 more to do painting wise and I'm going to do them all with this fleshy Bugman's Glow skin tone. So all I've got at the minute on the wet palette is I've got Bugman's Glow, Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. So I've got all three on those. I hope it's popping up all right. Um, this wet palette is a new contraption that Phil has designed. So the wet palette was uh, the, one, the one that I did on a, I did a tutorial on how to, or a quick tip really, not a tutorial, but how to build your own uh, wet palette dead cheap. It's the old Games Workshop, or the actually current, uh, basing sets. They come in these plastic tubs. I'll just show you. There you go, look, look at that. You can see it's just a, a Games Workshop basing kit tub with a bit of foam or sponge in the bottom and then some paper on the top of it. Really cheap and easy to do and you don't need to export it or anything. Models I have got that I'm looking forward to and I'm rewarding myself with this once I've done the Bestigores. I'm probably going to do the Shaman and I think I need to give him a, a Zenithal highlight before I start painting him. With I, I did try and do all of these black and then did a brown uh, primer over them but it didn't really, I, I generally went over all of it so I'm just going to spray this one white and I'm going to spray the rest of them white and I'm hoping that then I won't need to do as many layers and it will speed it up. I've got these two dudes who are in the back of the chariot. I just pulled off the whip of this one, I didn't like it and I've converted a Chaos chariot to work for my Beastmen. So they're quite cool and then I've got the big Gorgon you know what I'll get him out still haven't got a name for him yet he's probably not going to show up on the camera but you can see where he's up to uh, skin tone he's been primed with an airbrush that's the only bit of the army that I did with an airbrush because I kind of wanted to do it all by hand just to make it even more laborious and the skin tone is quite nice I'm not an expert with it I just blasted it just to get you know the big areas done and uh, I'm going to need to varnish him and then give him a wash and then start painting all of the base coats and things in. I've got three weeks left, including this week, to get this army done, so it's not long. I'm just going to take off my hoodie as well because it's really warm, sitting underneath a bunch of lights so that everyone can see. And I apologise in advance as well if the doorbell goes. I've got like four deliveries expected today. So at some point I will pause the stream and go and answer the door whenever it arrives. Alright, so let's have a look through the chat. Uh, so Dave is saying you can fill a beastman with corn. Oh, that's one thing. Corn ever chosen, but not sure about Nurgle's troops. So in the uh, book, in the audio book I was listening to, the Realmgate one, they do work alongside Nurgle in the story so I, I, and that's a current Age of Sigmar book so I'd imagine they're going to be able to work with Nurgle in the game as well if not now they will definitely put it in in future if they're keeping them but what I was saying is I wasn't too sure whether they were going to keep Beastmen in the the lore since there's not much going off with the army you know there's there's only six units there's not a lot of choice for the Bray Herds alone if you combine them with the War Herds there is but they don't really work together the Bray Herds and the War Herds have got buffs that benefit each other uh, well, themselves, but not the opposing faction. So I kind of... Oh god, this is a tiny brush. I was kind of expecting them to get rid of the Bray Herds. Um, but after hearing them in the audiobooks, and them being quite prominent, I imagine they're going to keep them. But if they're going to keep them, they're going to have to do something with them. I'm going to have to get a different brushes. 
I'm going to show you this brush as well. Look at this. This is the... Oh no, it was that one. That's the one that's not working. This is my small artificer brush from GW. Look how much I've had to cut it, cut it down just to get a straight line. A straight point. It's ridiculous. Like, I'm literally throwing this away as soon as I get my next brush. Uh, oh, I'll catch up with the chat now, actually. 1pm in Spain, apparently. Is Trump the Emperor of Man? No, doubt it. Slanesh for Clinton. 34 or 35 Brayhurts is a lot. It is, and I've got, once these Beastmen are done, ideally I need to get the Gores done, and there's 30 of those as well. So I've got a lot of Beastmen to be done. Painting live can help break the monogamy. Yes, it can, Martin, indeed. And I'm hoping that, you know, a lot of you are going to be at work right now, but anybody who's at home wanting an excuse to just break out the paints and some models and do something, I'm hoping this gives you the opportunity and maybe the push to, to get on with something. I might only do an hour. I might do an hour and a half. I might do six hours. But I'll do whatever I can, uh, to, can do. I know that... Painting like this underneath the camera definitely isn't as easy as just getting on with it without all the cameras and stuff in the way. So it is a bit more awkward for me, but if it helps other people, then I'm more than willing to to do it more often. And I was going to stick this up on Twitch rather than flood the YouTube channel, but... I've kind of not done much content recently because I've been just cracking on with these, so I figured at least you can see what I'm working on a little bit. Uh, you look like a Vallejo paints guy to me. I've got a few Vallejo paints. That it's not my ch ideal choice at the moment. I'm really liking the Scale 75 paints, although I def definitely need to, to work with them a lot more just to try and get the hang of them. And I'm switching with these skin tones. I've been switching between Vallejo, Scale 75 and GW. And they're definitely, they're all different. And trying to work with them the same way, they just don't, they don't work the same way. So it doesn't, it's not as easy. Oh, my fingers are in the way. Uh, Ian Stanford, welcome Ian Stanford. Thank you Coleman for putting the link up on the forum. Dave Dog, Beastmen are a marginalised race in Warhammer like giants. Yes, and you know, interestingly enough, in that audiobook again, this uh, one of them, I don't know which one it is, but there's um, bone giants. Oh, there's more male. There's bone giants that just turned up and they were quite cool. I'll paint some extra texture in there, because why not? And I'm just trying to get these done quickly now because I've got too much to do. Can always chuck a glaze over afterwards to blend some of these highlights in together. Uh, Coleman, that is beautiful. Thank you, Coleman. And Dispon Dispony Doff. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Uh, I don't want Beastmen to disappear. Would love some new models or just packs with round bases. Yeah, I know what you I know what you're saying about that. I had to get um I had to get six packs. No, more than that. I had to get a, a load of packs just to get these this army based, uh, which was a bit annoying. You know, you'd expect them to at least... I suppose you don't expect them to do anything, but it would have been nice if they had sent some round bases with them as well, because it can't cost them much to, to send them out. You're obviously buying the products from them. They don't support the 8th edition fantasy rules set anymore, so you would expect them to send out round bases. However... They do say you can play the game with whatever bases you want, so I'm probably going to have to change my camera setup just because I'm left-handed and it's getting in the way. Uh, and I'm quick. I'm going to have to keep stopping as well just so I can get through the chat. Paulos, oh one, very nice. Welcome, Paulos. Uh, I think the idea is that Beastmen in Age of Sigmar were being replaced by Chaos Marauders that are rough low-grade chaos troops yeah i mean that's definitely the feeling i was getting when i was you know, again listening to that audiobook like nurgle popped up this big nurgle dude and it was like ah oh. and at first i didn't know if it was nurgle or if it was a beastman or something with a giant scythe and at first i was like well scythe generally means nurgle but maybe there's a beast lord that's grabbed a scythe and is kind of badass but no it ended up being a nurgle warlord 
that had been leading the Beastman hordes and I was a little bit like, well, you could have done something with the Beastman there, but you didn't. Never mind. Uh, uh. Right, uh, Sophie Stevens finally made it to another live stream. Uh, welcome, Sophie. This is a random live stream. It's not. <laughs> I'm going to get through the chat as much as I can, but it's not going to be. Because I'm painting at the same time. You can you can tell I can't talk and paint at the same time. I'm going to have to practice more often with this. But trying to keep it underneath the camera. Keep an eye on the chat and try and paint without messing up too much. There we go, there's loads of texture added there. That's enough for that arm. It's a lot slower though. Mm -mm. Martin Dix, it's like the idea that Tau is losing crew. Tau, um, I, I quite like the Tau background and I like the, the fact that, you know, the crew, for anybody who doesn't know, I think most of you will know, but um, the Kroot were saved by the Tau. So the Tau, I can't remember what the Kroot were getting attacked by, but the Tau, I remember, just remember the Tau had basically swooped in, helped the Kroot, and then the Kroot pledged themselves to the Tau from that point onwards. And the Tau are very much, they, they send in the, uh, what are they called? I think they're called Ethereals. Not Ethereals. I feel like it's Ethereals. Um, the blue, they're all blue, they're all fishmen. Um, they send in a certain class of Tau, um, of the Tau race to be diplomatic and it's I think it's the one of the cast it might be the water cast and they're all split up into different things and they go off to different civilizations and basically say do you want to follow the you know the greater good follow our our rules join our society and if they don't then they basically blow them up or they they kill them or whatever um it's very much follow the greater good or die that's what the Tau do, but the crew, because they got saved by them, were just like, yeah, we love the greater good, we'll join you. So they kind of integrated themselves in the Tau Empire, which is quite cool. And you also get the the human auxiliaries. And uh, some of them, obviously when, when these diplomatic individuals get sent out to human populations, because there's so many worlds in the 40k universe that they can just, they run themselves. So some of them, some of these human worlds and civilizations, just end up joining the Tau Empire, and it's like that's really cool as well. You've got the option of getting some human warriors, and I did a Tau army in the past where I actually got some Katachan and Cadian bits and mixed them with some Tau weaponry, and I had some Tau mercenaries, uh, some some human mercenaries that worked in the Tau Empire, and it's quite nice that GW have given you the uh, opportunity to mix some of those into the into the army. But uh, I think the Vespians are the same. I think that's what they're called. The Vespians or Vespians. They're all mercenaries that, that join the greater good. So, if, you know, you could get anybody joining the greater good. You could get a ne Necron rocking up who's just like, I've broken from the cycle. I'm not under the control of my master anymore. I actually kind of like the idea of the greater good, so I'm going to join you. Can you give me one of those pulse carbines, please? And uh, you get Mr. Happy Necron running around for the greater good. It'd be great. Uh... Thought they thought GW learned a lesson in killing off the less popular factions and races. Yeah, I mean, they've got the potential to bring back as many. I, I I don't think it's a bad thing getting rid of races if there's too many. And you know, you're going to be disappointed if if your arm is gone. Um, however, if there's too many that they can't support, they end up being like the Beastmen where there's six units available and the Warherds where there's like four units available. And then it's almost like, well, you're better off just not having a faction at that point. So I'd rather they have factions that are supported rather than countless smaller ones that aren't. And the people who have collected, like I'm, I'm collecting Beastmen obviously at the minute, but I, I wouldn't if they got rid of them it would be disappointing but I could see why because they'd need to focus on the other rangers but that's not to say that beastmen are doing badly like if they supported beastmen and gave them a bunch of new units I'd say that they're going to be popular I mean look look at 40k for example they brought out that necromunda bounty hunter which was a beastman and everyone went nuts for it you know Moggy uh, Moggy's miniatures he painted one up and it looked amazing it's a great model so if they supported them and and 
they're in the law already. You know, they're in the current law for Age of Sigmar. It's not like they wiped them from it or anything. So, you know, just expand it a little bit more. What else? I'm gonna have to keep stopping more often. Let Ian Stanford start work on the custom Warlord Titan today. That looks really good as well, Ian. Um, he sent us that on. If you can, I don't, it's on our private Facebook actually. I don't know if it was available to be viewed by everybody else, but it's really cool custom Titan. That you, I think you said you were building it for a friend, weren't you, rather than yourself? Got these brushes. These brushes. And I will go through the chat. So I apologise if I'm not being very quick. I'm just conscious that I'm not really doing any painting, which is the whole purpose of this. But I will get through. I will talk to everybody who talks in that chat. I just want to chuck some colours on this. Because if Rachel comes home from, home from work and she says, how many, how many beastmen have you painted? And I say, one. I'll have to sit in a cage for the rest of the evening. It's just not nice. No, I just want to feel like I've actually done some things in progress today. Uh, if I could get all of this... Oh, God, that's horrendous. This brush is falling apart. If I could get some uh, all of the skin tones done today, ready for the rest of the, the highlighting tomorrow, then I'll be a bit more optimistic. And I, I haven't even looked in the box yet to see about how different the best uh, the gores and the ungores are to these ones because if there's a lot of flesh on them I'm going to be a little bit gutted because that's what's taking me the time and obviously giving them eight different skin tones is not going to help there you go that's an arm done <laughs> Jesus um, right Peter Higgins is currently painting a Mantic Dreadball team not, not really enjoying the minis now but nearly finished oh that's fair enough it's a shame you don't enjoy the minutes though, but hopefully the game makes up for it. Martin Dix, it was a rumour that came out with a forge, and so I'm dreading it. What was that? Oh, as in like Tower losing the crew. Mm. Yeah, one Spaz, one one. Welcome, Spaz. Else Nation, happy lunchtime to you indeed. Ian says, loves the Scale 75 colours, they are amazing. Got to, got to do a lot of work with it. Big Rich, hate early. Too early for me, heading to work, take care all. See you later, Big Rich. Have a good day at work. Martin Dix, I love that your rush quick painting is better than my best work. It's, it is still quite rough. And or like, like I was saying this to somebody else the other day, it's just neat and, and practice. And there's nothing special in the painting that I do. It's just... It's just bracing. Like, I have to have a, a chair which is quite low down and a table which is quite high up. You can see where my hands are. Look, I'm bracing my hands on the table and both of them are braced so that I don't shake. Uh, and that's all my painting is. It's picking the right colours, bracing my hand on the table and just trying to be as neat as possible. So there's no fancy wet blending or non-metallic metals or anything like that. I've got to learn all of that myself and practice it, but... Anybody can do what I'm doing, it's just practice. And I didn't paint for a few weeks, and I came back to trying to paint, and honestly, I think I, it looked like I'd been painting with my fingers, it was that bad. So keeping up painting is definitely important. And I said on the Saturday show that, you know, painting just an hour a day is worth doing to keep the hobby mojo up, but it's also good for keeping your uh, painting quality higher as well if you suddenly stop painting for a little bit then it takes a little bit i mean you'll get back into it but it takes a little bit longer to get back into the painting stride uh dave dog i need some tips from you guys if i want to strip normal citadel plastic or metal not fine cast when using methylated spirits how long would you put it in a standard ultrasonic cleaner uh phil knows that more than me uh I don't think it's long. I think you could do it for like 15 minutes or something. It's it's quite a short amount of time. But I, I know Paul um, Paul Phil swears by uh, isopropanol. Just putting it in that. Uh, Chris Green subscribed. Thank you, Chris. Put it in isopropanol. You can leave it overnight if it's really tough and it will strip the hell out of models. Uh, however, I don't know if that works on resin or not. I'm aware that extreme care, yeah, yeah, okay. Water cast, yes, it is water cast. And Phil's here. Hey, Phil. I, th I think you're supposed to be at work, aren't you, Phil? Custom Warlord Titan starts out in Italy. 
got a little Sam in my ear, says Val. <laughs> Working away with Sam in the ear. We're just transfix washing. <laughs> well, there's not much going on. It's I'm painting. You can see what I've done. I'm, I'm basically, I've done a base color of Bugman's Glow. I have washed it with, I think it's Reichland Flesh Shade on this. I've got my little color chart, my little uh, log that I've done. So you can see I've done this bit here. And then I'm just going to grab Cadian off the palette and put that into a smaller area on there. And almost, I can do if I can do two lines down the, the actual fingers, then that's perfect. If I can't, then I don't really worry about it too much. But you can see I'm just kind of going down. It's, the, the, this brush is falling apart, so it's not even... It's not got enough paint on the in the body of the brush, so it's drying up far too quick. Normally you want a, a brush that's got a bit of length in the body so it can hold the paint, but also have a really fine point at the end. And I know Ralph is getting me some Raphaels, I think they're called, from France. So when they arrive, I'm hoping I can get back to painting quicker again, because this is just, you can see how much this is slowing me down. And I haven't got any other brushes at the minute. I've got medium brushes, which are too too big. You can't paint two sides of a finger with a, a medium-sized brush. So I'm just going down there. And then I'm going to grab the Kislev. And with the Kislev, I generally just try and get it around the knuckles. Um, sometimes I do go down the, the fingers again, but it, trying to make a thinner line of that is quite difficult. Not the greatest of hands, but whatever. It'll do. And then just to get some of these knuckles done, I just start from the top of here and just drag it. See, the paint's not even coming off. Drying on the actual tip of the brush within a few seconds. I'll try this one again. There you go. And then like the ends of the fingers. So there's, the, these beastmen have got quite long fingers. That's quite bright. That is because I haven't actually used the Cadian on this side of the finger yet. Uh, there we go. I'm going to see if I've got another brush in a moment because this is not very easy. And I'll talk about the, the Realm Gate War books as well in a moment because they've got me through two days of painting. They're actually a lot shorter than I thought they were, good, were going to be. I was expecting like Horace Heresy style length of books where one book will take me a week to get through and that's just listening to it because there's so many hours but the Realmgate Wars are only about a couple of hours if that are a lot easier to get through. Uh, Frank Storm's doing some Terminators for my Death Guard now. I'll keep posting the progress Frank. Keep seeing it on um, Facebook and you're doing a good job. Let's see what brushes I've got. Uh, Paulus, I think the problem is that everyone wants everything straight away, but some of the older but marginal races will not be revisited for some time, but will get some love in time, I would have thought. Yeah, I don't mind that either, to be fair. It's just how long are you going to wait? I've got my Windsor & Newton size 1 brush that I've used like twice, and that frayed straight away as well. I've got my old miniature series, Series 7, which is just rubbish. There we go, we have got a small layer actually, could use that. See how long that takes to fray. <laughs> this is um, this is going to be... I've got an extra small artificer brush there as well, which is probably going to fray, it's brand new. Let's go for the Windsor Newton one, even though I know it's split as soon as I used it. Yeah, I think um, with what you were saying there, Paulos, I think if there was if there was some more 
stuff coming out more often, it wouldn't be a problem. I think the problem is that you get some new armies which are made, like the Fire Slayers and the Caradron Overlords and things like that, which are all being done before they even go back and do some of the older things. And it's almost like, well, I could understand that stuff takes time, but when you're making new armies and not actually making units or upgrades for the, the armies you've got, it almost feels like that's not the focus for them. The, the focus is making new armies which sell, which they do, and they're great, but the, the focus is not on almost patching and upgrading older armies, so it's all about focusing on the new. Which could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. I mean, these models, I'm not going to lie, these models are horrible to paint. And um, I haven't had a lot of fun painting them. There's just... With the newer models, you've got... They, they've designed them in a way so you can paint them a lot easier. These Beastmen... I'll show you in a second. I'll just finish this bit here. I don't think I've got small enough brush for this. This is almost like a medium layer brush from Games Workshop, so it's quite thick to try and, to try and do the little uh, edge highlighting on the skin that I was wanting to do is blooming difficult. I hope the uh, microphone, the voice and all that audio is coming through okay, actually. I never bothered to check at the beginning. It just went live. Put a good old 10 minute countdown on it as well. Oh, there we go, we can almost get some tiny little... It's a bit bright though. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to go back over this one and, and definitely glaze it down, the skin tone. The difference between Bugman's and Cadian. Let's try using a bit of Cadian, water down. Glaze that down a little bit. Uh, right, let's just chuck this over here. probably do with a, a pin wash after this actually as well just to get into some of these nooks and crannies yeah don't like the transition there um, have you tried the scale 75 ink I haven't Ian I want to get the ink set and I want to get the metallic set they're the two ones that I haven't got I got a lot of the fantasy range colors so and I, I got the the fantasy like I say the fantasy colors are nice and bright and they're quite nice colours. But I definitely need the metallic range. I'm running out of metallics anyway. And GW ones, they're hit and miss. Some of them are great. Like Balthazar Gold, Lead Belcher, uh, Stormcast Silver. And some of the newer ones are great. But the brasses and the coppery colours, I tend to find them being a bit hit and miss. Sometimes you get one that's great. But like Rune Lord Brass, it's a great colour. But... Most times it just starts to clump up and go nasty in, in about a month. And a paint that only lasts a month is not good enough for me. I don't know who gets through paint that quickly. Well, I do. Commission painters do, but even then, paint does last quite a while. And you'd be... Uh, I mean, you'd, you'd have to paint a whole army with and like a good sized army to get through it in a month. There we go, this brush is working a bit better now. Still need to get myself some brush cleaner as well. Some of the master stuff, I think you can get it on Amazon. I know a lot of people have said just use normal soap, but I've tried that in the past and it just doesn't seem to work. Uh, 
that. So Phil is helping about stripping models. Stripping models is something that comes up so often. Like, I don't know how many times I've got Phil to answer that question. I think maybe we should just have uh, a stripping video. I mean, I know everybody's not that type of stripping. I know everybody's got their own video on stripping paint off models. Um, but I feel like the amount of times we get asked the question, it's probably worth just doing a, a video, chucking it in a playlist and pointing people in that direction whenever the question's asked. Because then we can go through the full process. Because there's different products you can use and there's there's all sorts that works and there's all sorts that can go wrong as well, which is why the question comes up so much. So having a video that compiles all of that would definitely be worth it. Really don't like the, the colour. The colour between Bugman's and Cadian is quite high. Oh, there's a door going. Is that another mail delivery? What do you think? Shall we uh, place some bets? No, we can't do betting online. It gets rid of for that. Uh, 30 watching. Let's see some likes from Phil. Thank you to the 15 people that have liked. Uh, and the well, one person that disliked, I think that was almost immediately. So, thank you to that disliker. You have aided in engaging with the channel, so I appreciate it. If races are appearing in novels, I guess that's a positive sign for their future in-game. Yeah. Um, I mean... I was quite surprised at what was appearing in the in the audiobooks, the Realmgate Wars. I was kind of in two minds um, because some of the the writing just seemed a little bit weird. Like I, I actually thought that I'd listened to the same book so many times over because they all began at the same time and the same phrases were used throughout. And I know that was probably done for effect, but it. Some of the the same like scenes and things that they talk about something, and it felt like they were doing. It was like deja vu every single time it got to a new audiobook. It was like, am I listening to the same one as I did before? Because it just it just seemed to be the same setting. I don't know if the, if the writers have got like a set amount of key phrases that they use, but they definitely used the same ones in those that series. Uh, and there's there's a lot of the the stormcast are quite interesting. I actually, from from listening to those books, I've got a better understanding of what they're like, and they're quite good. Like in a way, they've got no they have no fear because they're they're generally they're all heroes. So they've all been picked by Sigmar before they die, whatever battle they're in or how they're about to die. They basically call out for Sigmar. And Sigmar will either leave them and let them die, or he'll he'll pluck them from before they die and chuck them into the uh, I think it's called the Skyforge, where they get reforged. And generally, they're heroes. So if you think about all the really cool heroes from fantasy, imagine one of those going and Sigmar just saving them at the last minute. And he um, they get they get reforged and then they get put into a chamber, which are, are like chapters for Stormcast Eternals, and then they go off and do Sigmar's bidding. But because whenever they die, they, they get teleported back up to the, the sky forge and reforged and then sent back out again, they, they almost don't have any fear because it doesn't matter if they die, they're just going to come back to life. But there's the other flip side of that, which is quite cool with this whole Malign Portent stuff, with the fact that Nagash is pretty irritated that Sigmar is stealing the souls from him. And Nagash has got the power to overrule Sigmar's um, plucking of souls, if you get what I mean. Like he can interrupt the whole process, and if a Stormcast Eternal dies around Nagash, Nagash can just be like, "Yeah, you're my soul now." So they're actually dead, or their soul belongs to Nagash, which suddenly makes the Stormcast Eternals 
vulnerable and um, they actually do have fear around somebody like Nagash, which is quite interesting as well. But the amount of times where in the, that series they talk about who can do this and then everyone goes, only the faithful. Everything is only the faithful because that's the Stormcast Eternals. Who's going to have tea tonight? Only the faithful. And it's just rinse and repeat. Every line is that. Um, one character that stood out to me as being absolutely amazing, though, was Manfred von Karstein in that series. He's just so cool. And the, whoever did the voice acting, really, really good. Really good. There you go. That's a leg done. I'm not going to town with these anymore. Mm. Coleman, I really hope it's time to bring the law a bit forward again. After after listening to those books, I, I really like the law for the Sigmar universe now. Um, there's some really good stuff on there, to be fair. Like the realm gates. One thing I didn't know as well, the, the death gate, I think it is in Shire Show. To to get to the underworld, you have to find the, the realm gate that allows you to get there. And they are in a cycle of um, death and rebirth. The actual realm gates themselves. So nobody can find the way into the underworld because the gates are, are hidden. And as soon as they find them, like if somebody finds a way to, to, to locate them, chances are they'll have already been... Uh, they'll have already fallen apart and then been rebuilt somewhere else in the world of Shyesh again. So it's I didn't know that. I didn't know that they had to find the realm gate to get into the underworld to then go and even challenge Nagash. So one of the things that that series of books is all about is trying to find their way into the underworld so that they can talk to Nagash sort of thing and, and it's such a big process and there's a, a, a artifact that um, its sole purpose is basically to find the, the Death Realm Gates. That was really awesome. And another thing was the uh, the Oryx, the Iron Jaws, were in that series. And um, I, I know that in 40k, Orcs can keep growing. They can get as big as they want, basically. And there's, there is an Orc in Warhammer 40k who is literally a planet. Like, he's grown to the size of a planet... And he floats around the uh, the galaxy and has his own ecosystem on his back. So that's pretty awesome. And in Sigmar, it seems like it's the same because there are orcs as big as mountains. So if anybody wants to do a really cool conversion, build yourself a piece of scenery in the form of a orc or an auric. But it was quite interesting listening to the Iron Jaws as well. The, the voice acting was actually, and the, the audiobooks in general were a lot better. I think they've upped the quality. After doing the Horus Heresy ones, the, the early Horus Heresy books were they were good. But now in the, the later stuff that they're doing, they've got so many different sound effects and multiple different voice actors in there to, to do all the different roles. And you can definitely tell the quality difference between the the original or the the older audiobooks for the Games Workshop have released to the newer stuff that's being released now. It's it's much higher quality. As with anything, it generally gets better. So many games have such a rich lore and background that doesn't seem to matter or connect with the gameplay. The um you know, the gameplay in Sigmar now is very much more... It's a lot more linked. More linked with the lore. I think the thematic rules, you see them more often. Um, I definitely look at the rules and think, yeah, that's right, a lot of the time. You, you look at the rules and you, you realise that it is very close to how they would behave in the actual lore. And I think that's how... It should be. It shouldn't just be buy all of this and you've got really cool rules so that people go out and buy the models and dominate. You know, they've got to the point now where they're tweaking stuff so if things are overpowered they change it, but they're not changing it so it's not thematic anymore. The, the theme is still there, it's just the 
overpowered stuff gets taken out. Which is the right way to go about things. And I think you can have a powerful army as well as being thematic. You can do the both of them. And I, I haven't looked at anything to do with the new Marathis, Daughters of Cain yet. So I don't know what they're like, but I imagine there's a lot of shadow and sacrifice and blood involved. There we go. Um, five pounds it is for donation. Uh, hold on one moment. Have I got a donation? Let me have a look. I haven't got my Streamlabs things up. Let me see if it's up. Unless you're talking about something else entirely. Uh, yeah, there's no... Nothing. Oh, there's the door. I'll be right back. We didn't even bet on that. That was the door that time then. Uh, Frost and Fist, a stripping video sounds like Magic Mike is returning to the channel. <laughs> Joking. I don't, still don't know where Magic Mike is. Needing to get in contact with me. Right, Sophie Stevens, memo to self don't get so distracted by Warhammer that you forget about your lunch in the oven. I need to get some food later as well. <laughs> You've reminded me about eating. A new Kobe, new Kobe. Welcome. Um, oh god, it's skipping like crazy. Uh, right, so for Stevens, a bit more overcooked than anything that will teach me for not having my painting and laptop with the stream downstairs near the kitchen. Well, it's good to know that somebody else is painting. Uh, if anybody else is painting, let us know and then we'll know if it's worth it or not. Master's brush cleaner is hard to get in Europe, has to be obtained from eBay and Amazon. Yeah, I'll definitely have to go on Amazon then to get it. Um, the sponges, the wet palettes, Dave. This is just a sponge from the, the supermarket. You know what, I'll grab the one that I'm using. So I'll put this under the uh, camera, uh, although it's not showing up very well. So you can see what type of sponge that is. I've just cut it down to size. It's about five millimeters in uh, width. They're quite thin, but they're really cheap. Like you buy five of those for like two pounds and then you cut them down and they work for absolutely ages. Uh, that girl painter one tar, she uses a wet sock. <laughs> As a wet palette, that's interesting. Oh, there is a donation that's popped up. Thank you, Martin. Much appreciated. I don't know if that's a really old one or something, but it's literally just popped up now, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Frank, for sharing with your group as well. Appreciated as well. And we're getting close to 10k. Oh, now it's popped up. <laughs> Martin Dix donated £5 through Super Chat. So thank you again. Um, yeah, everyone who is sharing the channel, even if it's just random videos that we've done in the past or stuff that's helped out, some quick tips or tutorials or the chats where we just drone on for ages, everyone who's shared those to your groups and friends and whatever, it's it's uh, appreciated. We definitely wouldn't grow as, as we have done without the help of all of you. So thank you again. Uh, Chapter Master Valrak, is that a wet palette? It is, look at this. And hey Valrak. I need to invest in one. This is a box Valrak <laughs> with some sponge. It's so cheap. You can buy really good ones. I think there's an everlasting wet palette, but you know, it, I'd definitely try it out, but at the minute I'm in no rush. If you know what I mean? This works perfectly fine for me. You can see how um, watery the surface is. The, the paint has separated, obviously, and this will stay wet for 
a while and it, it doesn't stay wet if I don't put the lid on but luckily these Games Workshop boxes come with a lid so it lasts for a week if it needs to. <laughs> yeah, Phil, Phil's just said seriously use the, uh, the, the tray from the Citadel Scenery grass tufts and a cheap sponge cloth cut to size better than the pro versions. Yeah I had the P3 one as same as Phil and it was just not very good. This thing that I made has been better and I've never had an issue with it. Sir Murgleton. Hello, welcome. Uh, testing a darker skin tone for my Beast Claw Raiders is hard. What colours are you using? Like I said, the darker skin tone that I've used is... Uh, this is a Vallejo colour, I think. Let me just bring up the paint chart. This is Vallejo Burned Flesh with an Agrax Wash. Followed by reddish flesh and medium flesh. So that's all I've used. Three colours and a wash. Looks quite nice. Tiny little beady, evil, beast many eyes. Uh, Martin Dick's Dangerous Terrain. <laughs> yeah, with the giant Iron Jaw Mountain. That would be so cool. I'm going to have to do an Iron Jaw Mountain now. Potential squishing, squishing from a boulder sized fist. Yeah. Um, uh, if anyone is interested in the Age of Sigmar background, I would definitely recommend the Realm Gate War audiobooks. They're, they're really good. It's, some of it's a bit samey, like I said, and the same phrases. There's one of them that wasn't too great. I think it was the, the Beast of Karthak or Karthi or something like that. That wasn't very good. Every other book was good. And one of the earlier ones was amazing. I think it was the first or the second one in the series. What kind of cloth do you use? It's just a sponge from Morrison's. I'll try and find the link and I'll send it to you, Mr. Valrak. Uh, writer Sophie Stevens, voice acting wise, the best I've heard would be the Glockkin brothers with their West Country accents in the Maggotkin trailer. I can't remember that. Ma um, Manfred, definitely. I mean, just from the accent and the cockiness of Manfred in these, this series, he's... I mean, I say this all the time, when I listen to the Heresy books, I almost start a new Legion every time. But after listening to those, I, I very uh, nearly bought Manfred just to build and paint him. I was going to do him with the deep red ragged cloak and the you know the black armour that he's described as having. And he's just a really cool character. I think I'm going to have to do him. And it's not even like... He just has a load of skeletons. It's basically himself. He doesn't really work with other people. He likes to be in charge and all he does is summon a bunch of skeletons and make the dead work for him. He's basically a one-man army. He sees himself as... He's got royal blood, but I, I could see like he's the king of the undead. He almost wants to rule the undead over Nagash and, and um, that's the sort of aims he's got, but whether he's powerful enough, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he is, but... He's such a cool character. Still need to get an airbrush as well. Yeah, Varak, you and me both. I need the space for a, a good sized one. Um, but learning it is, you know, there's plenty of videos out there. Phil's done some really good tutorials and there's a lot of other YouTube channels and resources around the web uh, that, you know, that can teach you how to airbrush. A lot of it's around cleaning. Once you get the cleaning process down, it's a very fast method for painting armies. Garbis. Uh, the Beastmen were mentioned in one of the recent Malai important short stories as well. I think if they were going to get rid of them, they would have slowly started the put-on-ignore process. No, yeah, exactly. I don't think they're getting rid of the Beastmen anytime soon. I think they are seen as almost like a an allied army. It's a mercenary force rather than an army in their own right which might work you might you know i might end up getting some more chaos to work with the beastmen so i have the beastmen as an allied army do a thousand points of them and that's it and then chuck it into a chaos army of some sort it's a shame they don't ally themselves to death although i could do that as well um although i don't like the whole allied stuff so maybe not i don't know we'll see uh, one spaz 11 painting here but not for much longer it's almost 5 a.m geez i've slowly got my sleep pattern back to a normal i wake up at 7 30 8 o'clock and i go to bed at 12 or 1 so i'm back to a normal sleeping pattern i definitely did the same as you i was going to bed at 4 or 5 in the morning waking up at 9 or 10 it wasn't doing me any good uh, derpins maximus lets you get the basics down give up and table flip without sinking too much cash into it 
What's that? Oh, for the airbrush. Yeah, the basic setup. It's a really good one on Amazon. I think it's about 85 or 90 quid. That gives you a compressor and an airbrush. And the other stuff you're going to need to make sure you get are things like uh, your thinner, your airbrush cleaner. Um, you can get different hoses so that you can extend it and things. Make sure that the compressor has got a uh, valve on it as well so you can change the pressure. Uh, what else do I normally definitely need? Kitchen, like little kitchen rolls, but you can get the um, blue rolls that you see at garages. They're really good for cleaning out your airbrush. Cocktail sticks. I'm just trying to think of all the stuff that Phil uses, but maybe Phil could do like a, a video, which is a, a checklist of all the stuff that is worth getting if you're going to be doing airbrushing, and that way you can just go through and do an Amazon purchase with all of it on it. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Uh, Phil's saying, I would love to do Skaven one day. You're on your own with that, Phil. I definitely don't ever want to do Skaven. Unless they were Eshin. I quite like the Assassins. Frost and Fist, I really want to collect and paint Daughters of Cain so badly, but I'm making myself at least 50 pieces of my 100 plus backlog before buying into AOS. Yeah, that's fair enough. Or you could just, you could just treat yourself to a little bit of AOS and... Uh, you know, once you've painted stuff in between, you go back to it. Uh, somebody is joining the Wargamer Online Facebook community group. If anybody isn't already on there, actually, just go on Facebook, type in Wargamer Online Space Community, and then join the, the little group. It's a closed one. And we'll accept you. And you can post away. Same as the forum, wargameronline.com. You can sign up for free to make your own account, and then post on the forum. Martin Dix, that Nylock Oxide frustrates me. Put it on the forum. Any tips would be good. I'll have a look for you, Martin. I'm going to be using Oxide on the Beastmen, on the gold areas, because I was thinking it, it, you know, gold doesn't oxidize, it goes brown, tarnishes, but because this is a fantasy world and I don't care, I'm going to put oxidization on it. And it's also more of a brassy or a coppery color than a gold. So I'm going to get away with it either way. <laughs> Nobody can ruin my fun. I just like the color. I like the color of Oxide. Uh, what's the cover on the top of the sponge? This is, uh, I don't know, we got these sent to us from a viewer, but it's almost like the backing paper. You know when you get like sticky paper and you rip off the sticker, it's the backing paper, so it's got like a glossy finish on one side, but baking paper uh, or parchment paper does exactly the same thing. These are just cut the same size as the box that I use, which is almost like fate. So I've used these so so uh, since then. Oh yeah, Phil's put it down. Better still, the backing paper from large sticky labels. Undead Beastman for the whim. While you're all here, don't forget the live bat rep tonight. Yeah, um, so Phil as I don't know who's there actually. I don't know who is playing the ogres. It might be, I don't know if Mark Potter's got ogres still. I did remember him having them. So it could potentially be Mark and Matt Pink. I think that's who I would put bets on. Gutbusters. Yeah, that would be a good game. I actually like Stormcast more after listening to them. I was never interested before because it was almost like, yeah, they're the, they're the Space Marines of Age of Sigmar and they, they don't grip you, but as soon as you start listening to the audiobooks, it just reminded me of their Horus Heresy so much. Like, each of the chambers for the Stormcast are the chapters from the Heresy and Sigmar sends nine of them out to go and find the Realm Gates once they've been taken over by chaos again and things so it's like there's nine chapters that's half of the traitor uh, half of the allegiance that the emperor created in the heresy or in 40k it's very close and they all have their very different aspects to the chambers as well so i think they're called the hallowed knights they're almost like medieval knights they look after the weak um, they like do crusading and and basically they save civilians and they do whatever everyone does whatever Sigmar says but they just reminded me of medieval knights more than anything and they always bang on about only the faithful far too much for my liking but then there's another there was another chamber which popped up in the books and they were one of them was like the barbarians which was this other cha chamber uh, and the hallowed knights are very much pure and um they're all about faith and stuff so they're very they've got a lot of priests and stuff in their army 
but the the other army was all about being barbarian and that's the two sides of sigma you've got the faith and the priest side the the warrior side and then you've got the barbarian side and his chambers have got it's very similar to the emperor and the tra uh, the uh, the legions each of the legions have got the the primarchs have got a part of the emperor so they have a trait which is taken from the emperor and it's very similar to the the chambers and sigma in in that aspect Martin Dick, Sam, the Whisper, <laughs> enlarging your plastic shame box. I do apologise, I know how bad it is. And I hate it when somebody tells me, oh, this model's nice, isn't it? And then I have to go and get it. So I apologise for doing the same back to you, Mr. Mythos. And anybody else? <laughs> anybody else? Let me know what you're interested in uh, maybe starting and I will convince you that it's worth doing. Uh, when GW revisit Beastmen, I hope they introduce werewolves into their lore somehow. GW werewolves models would be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I still haven't quite figured out how Beastmen become Beastmen. I mean, I think they're just humans that get corrupted. Uh, and, like, the Beastmen can turn humans into Beastmen. However, I don't know how it's done. And in one of those books, they were talking about this water uh, that was... if different points of the year so at one point of the year beasts and animals can drink from it and the other part of the year only humans can drink from it so um, I don't know whether if you drink that at the wrong time you turn into a beast maybe that's something that happens this is not easy with a big brush like this Writer Sophie Stevens. These are the Forge World Skin Wolves, if I recall, although they're Forge World Resin, so plastic GW ones would be nice. The, the Skin Wolves are great. There was a limited edition one at some point as well that was nice. That was a nice model. I'd have definitely painted that up. Uh, Phil saying Mark Potter and Pink, so it is those two. <laughs> Good guess. Paul Collier, how do everyone just woke up from Night Shift? What a wonderful surprise. Thank you, Paul. I hope you had a, a good night shift and uh, an even better sleep. Ian Stanford, I play AOS last night at club. I used Beast Claw Raiders, played against Nurgle. I know um, they were definitely better in the past because the Beast Claw Raiders, uh, well, Destruction in general, had much nicer rules before they decided to nerf them. You know, I was a bit annoyed that they took away the Battle Brew, but I can understand why it was quite powerful. But I definitely didn't like the change in the the general battle trait that destruction lost it made it a lot less powerful uh, and even though iron jaws got some other benefits to their specific trait it's just nowhere near as reliable as it used to be so you can't set up your army anywhere near the same as you used to be able to now you have to have a bunch of heroes and hope that you manage to roll fours and sixes Try and get some thin lines on here. Oh, not quite thin enough. Got a bunch of mail come through. Can't remember what we ordered now. God, that's so bright. Brush is way too big. Trying to paint like artificial brush sized lines with a medium sized brush. I'm gonna have to leave that one till later. Mm. <laughs> I try it. If I started the Stormcast Army, I would call them the Chamber Pots. <laughs> hey, Amit, I hope you're well. I've not seen you or spoken to you in a while now. It's been a sad time. Two, four, six, seven more to go. And then I can paint the rest of the colours. 
Paul Collier, back in the day, I used to do high elves in fantasy. What are your thoughts for their future? Don't know much about Sigmar lore and what happens to Teclis and Tyrion. So, um, I don't know all of what happened to Teclis and uh, Tyrion. I know that they basically woke up. I can't remember which realm it's in. It might be the realm of light. And Tyrion is blind. And Teclis is the only way that he can basically see. I think he sees through Teclis. I don't know if that's literally or just a figure of speech. So, you know, Teclis is his guide, which was quite interesting because in the old old world, Teclis was the... He was uh, born weak and crippled. So Tyrion always used to look after him. Tyrion was like the strong prince and he was the warrior, whereas Teclis was the weak, weak and feeble wizard. And now it's switched over, so Teclis is still he's still kind of weak, but he's he's gone through the whole of the end times. He's became such a huge, powerful character towards the end of that that in the Age of Sigmar he's a completely new character. You know, he's not weak and feeble. He's learned tons of stuff. He's super powerful, and now his brother is relying on him the other way around. Um, between them, I think they went and did something with Slanesh. I don't know whether they killed Slanesh or locked her uh, him or her or them up um, however they managed to rescue the souls of the elves and, and again that could have been with Malarian and Marathi's help or it could have just been Malarian and Marathi that, that freed the elves I don't know yet but um, you know the rumours are that there's going to be some sea elves we, we heard that a few months ago and uh, the, the rumours since have been like there's going to be some of these seahorse type creatures which I'm in two minds about I don't I almost don't see how a sea uh, at least sea creatures work in Age of Sigmar because unless you're in the sea I mean if you've got this giant you know Atlantis army <laughs> if Aquaman's coming after you you just stand on the land don't you <laughs> it's just you just don't stand on land uh, don't go into the water and it's all good so I don't know how a, a sea based army works in age of sigmar and uh, i see they you know they got round it with the caradon overlords by giving them flying boats giving them airships instead so it had still a very nautical theme but it was they're all in the air they're all flying around they've got sky ships and things i don't know if it works the same way where they're just sailing around in boats or whether that's just a part of their army so they own the seas but they're also quite powerful on land with other units but I almost think if you're playing on a desert and somebody brings some seahorses, you kind of go, yeah, they can't be brought. Sorry. They're dead. Um, Theme-wise, it would work having uh, high elves being remade into a, a sea-based army. You know, Maybe their stronghold is by the ocean because they had the Lothan Sea Guard in the old world. So it makes sense that they would be... The, almost like the the equivalent in Age of Sigmar. But I don't think the rest of the army is lends itself too much to, to the ocean. Uh, and I think Dark Elves had as much opportunity of being by the sea as well. They had the Corsairs, they had the Black Arcs, they had the Charybdis, and they, you know, they had an, enough cr sea creatures. What I was thinking is maybe they're going to combine those together. So you have the Corsairs, the Lothan Sea Guard, the Charybdis, the fleet masters and all that stuff everything that's based around the sea go into one faction so it's dark elves and high elves merged with some new units that could be a possibility as well um mm -mm. Garbis, I can't wait for some Stormcast Chambers inevitably fall to Chaos Corruption. I can already imagine how badass Chaos Stormcast will look with horns and mutations protruding from their massive armour. That's the that's the idea of what I'm doing with my Stormcast army, Garbis, when it happens. I mean, I've got two more projects. So I've got this project and one more to finish. And then I'm going to start the Stormcast. But I'm doing a Chaos Tainted version of it. And I'm running it almost... I'm going to follow these, the Horus Heresy probably come up with my own little name for it and do my own campaign but I'm definitely going to be doing some form of corrupt chaosified version uh, and like I said uh, I'm going to run along the theme of maybe one of them got corrupted and then went back up into 
Sigmaron or Sigmardon or whatever it's called and corrupted the rest of a, cha a chamber and turned them against Sigmar. But it can't be called a heresy. It's going to have to be called like the betrayal. They like using the word betrayer and betrayal in Age of Sigmar more than they do heresy. So in Sigmar, everything's a betrayal. Everything in 40k and 30k is a, is a heresy. I hate this brush so ho much. It's making this hard to blum in paint. Doesn't help that my fat fingers are in the way of the camera as well. <laughs> Derpimus, I'm interested in starting to finish a project <laughs> one day perhaps. It is always good when you finish one. It's also very rare. Uh, Martin Dick's werewolf character be like the two model that just got released. Um, like Marathi. So you've got like a human form and then you've got a, a werewolf form. That would be cool. And they've done it now, so they've got no excuse. They can definitely do it again. Uh, Spaz has got to go. See you later, Spaz. Have a good sleep. Derpimus. Maybe if they eat after midnight, they turn into beasts. That sounds like original. <laughs> Wasn't that... What was it? Gremlins. To put water on them or something. I haven't seen that film in years. Uh, writer Sophie Stevens. Oh god, I've got loads of chat to catch up on. I'll stop painting for a second. Uh, at least I think they're called skin wolves. Yeah, they are. Uh, some, yeah, they're basically pulling off their human skin through their transformation. I didn't know that. That's cool. Peter Higgins, steroids and protein shakes equals beastmen. <laughs> yeah, and just yeah, fighting and eating. That's what beastmen are. These are quite pinky. Probably should have done darker skin tone as uh, of skin. Acharya, men equals grow beard. Uh, men grow beard. Beard men, unkempt beard equals beast men. So Phil just has to leave his beard unkempt for a few uh, days, and he becomes a beast man. Frank, looking forward to seeing what the water elves look like. I think they could get some really cool looking. Um, Casters, like wizards and stuff. So writer Sophie Stevens. I wonder how you would get a beast woman. And that's interesting, actually. I mean, they've changed the name as well. It's not beast men anymore. More, it's bray herds. So that opens it up. You don't have to have male. You can have whatever you want, which is again opens it up. Maybe I should do a conversion. Ian loves Thunder Tusk. Thunder Tusks are amazing. <laughs> Frost and Fists apparently dated a few beast women. <laughs> Frank saying, I'm guessing a big release like last year's Overlord. Yeah, I think uh I think the all of the releases that Games Workshop do from now on are gonna be like that. They're gonna be an army book, some dice, some cards, and then a bunch of models. It's better that they do it like that, rather than just dragging it out and releasing them over a three-month period. It just takes too long. Uh, Phil's got to go to a meeting soon. Great show, Sam. Paid faster. Paid faster? Paint faster. Yeah, it's slowing down the painting, actually, doing it this way, but never mind. Paul, thanks, Sam. Look forward to see what they do. Yeah, me too. Martin, I enjoy the Slanesh chat. Always ends with him, her, it, they. <laughs> Uh, Dave uses parchment baking paper on top of his wet sponge. Oh, right. Yeah, Sophie, will we see the return of the land ship? Maybe a sea elf version of, instead of the Marienburg this time. I'd love to see the land ship. Um, that's definitely an option. You know, maybe it's not called, maybe it's not sea elves. Maybe they've just got a boat that works everywhere. <laughs> Magical boat. 
it goes where they want it to go. Sea elves would be better from a marketing standpoint. I don't think seamen would be popular. Oh, jeez, Acharya. Pirates, yes, Martin. Dirt from a seahorse's work for anywhere if you sing, Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside loud enough. I don't think that's the case, Derpimus, but we will have to try it. Redcuffs is here as well. Welcome, Redcuffs. And a Kraken, Frank. That would be... I would definitely be doing them if, if there was a Kraken involved. Or any sort of Leviathan. They could definitely do some cool models with that. Chuck some highlights on here. We have a little bit of Kislev. Actually preferred which which paint did I like using? I think I think it was the Vallejo that were the easiest to paint with. Actually, all right. Uh, Paulus heard the sea elves might have an Atlantean theme. Yeah, I did see that the the Greek aesthetic. Yeah, it would be really cool. Uh, Spartan style, you know, a hoplite armor. Uh, I've always liked the look of the. Uh, the sp the Spartan, the hoplite helmets, and the uh, what are their weapons called? Oh, God, how do I forget something like that? I swear it begins with a P, but I'm probably not right. Oh God, I had it then for a second as well. Uh, no, it's gone. I like the weapons. And the helmets. Uh, I know the the three hundred version of Spartans is not what the, the Spartans actually used to wear. I th I'm pretty sure that the the three hundred style of Spartans was their robes is what they wore in peacetime. They didn't wear it when they went to war. That was what they wore, just walking around the house sort of thing. <laughs> Which is why they in the film three hundred when they went to war they weren't actually going to war because they weren't supposed to so they just went out in their casual wear which is basically naked with a robe but the actual Spartans used to wear full armour when they were in battle normally so getting some sort but this is the thing I don't get like if GW is getting rid of Tomb Kings and Bretonians because they're too close to a, a theme then why would you go back with a brand new army and make it very close to Greek Greek mythology or Greek, you know, the Greek army sort of thing. Garbis, that sounds awesome. Can't wait to see what designs you come up with. What base armor color are you thinking of going with? Well, Garbis, what I always tend to do is black armor, and I've done it on this again. My Iron Jaws had black armor. Beastmen have got black armor. I'm doing black dragons with, guess what? Black armor. I don't want to do black armor, but because it's Chaos Stormcast, it feels like it's going to be what matches best, but I'm not sure. Maybe a deep blue. Maybe, maybe a deep purplish color. I'm not sure though. I'll have to, I'll have to look into it. I'm in two minds because obviously they're corrupted, so <clears throat> maybe they would just have any Stormcast colour, but the corruptions would show in the, the form of their eyes and the gifts and things that Chaos would give them, not necessarily in the colour of their armour, unless they repainted it. And the way that I want to do it is not... Um, it, it's not that they go back up to some Chaos area and start being remade. It's more that 
once they've been created. I haven't really thought about it too much because I, I was thinking they, they when they die, they die. You know, um, Nagash takes them rather than Sigmar. But then I'm thinking, where did the rest of them come from? Because if Sigmar had this great betrayal and the betrayal was from the Stormcast Eternal, then surely he would just stop reforging them because Sigmar's the one that is reforging them in the first place. So if somebody is cursed or corrupted, then why would he let them come back to the heavens? So I'm kind of in two minds of how it would work. Maybe the... I don't know, maybe maybe a whole chamber has been corrupted and Chaos has a way to to reforge them in their own way, but when they get reforged, they get reforged into this whole mutated, terrifying version of a Stormcast Eternal. And that's what happens. Uh, and if I was doing that, I don't know which one would be better to go with, which god would be better, or maybe... Maybe the Chaos Gods all come together for a little bit just to make sure that they can beat Storm uh, Sigmar. There's multiple different ways where I think it could go. But I think I'd be more likely to lean towards one of those. I mean, the, the chances are there's, there's more likelihood of death um, having... Stormcast Eternals than Chaos, I think, just because of that reason. Like, if if a Spart if, if a Spartan if a Stormcast Eternal dies, then they either go to heaven, Azir, and get reforged into a Stormcast Eternal again, or they go to the the realm of death with Nagash. So if they go to the realm of death with Nagash, maybe he could just corrupt them. Maybe he could just let, before they die, you know, let them stay in their armor. And then you've just got Undead Stormcast. That could work. But I did kind of want to do the Chaos side. I want to do a, I want to do a Corrupted Stormcast army. Not an Undead Stormcast army. However, that would allow me to use Manfred. <laughs> with a bunch of Stormcast. Which would be pretty good. Man freed. Okay. Uh, wolf Wraith. Skin wolves are great if you're looking for some AOS werewolves. That's it. I do like werewolves. Got vampires, why not have werewolves? Martin Dix says, Sorry, as much as I want to stay and spam the chat, I must go and at least stare at the weights room in the gym. That's fair enough, Martin. I haven't been to the gym in at least three to four years. I have lost all of my muscle and I have become scrawny again. So I would. You need a lot of time to go to the gym properly. And it's a lot of money to buy all the food and everything just to keep on top of it as well. Unless you're just toning and, and staying fit, in which case. Fair play to you. I just got bored of that. Dave is saying the High Elves are split into about four different factions without many minis for each, which is annoying, yeah. Um, that's what annoyed me. I mean, they've got the White Lions, the Phoenix side, you've got the Eldritch Council, you've got the Sea Elf side, um, and the Dragon side. There's, there's too many. That's just the High Elves. And I think if they if they got rid of some of those or combine them together again, I think that's the only way they can make it work. Uh, the rumour is that Wanderers and Wood Elves will be getting their own battle tome. Yeah, that makes sense. They've got enough models. They've got more models than Beastmen. They've got some really good rules in the General's Handbook at the moment as well, actually. The shield is a Hoplon. 300 is based on the comic book. And the Spartan sword I'm thinking of is a Copus. Maybe it isn't that that I was thinking of then. Spartan weapon. Let's have a look. And I'll tell you the one I was thinking of. Ah, uh, there we go. The Xiphos, or however you pronounce it. X I P H O S. That was the one I was thinking of. Uh, writer Sophie Stevens for Sea Elves. There are proxy sea creatures in the game Wrath of Kings. 
Hope this helps if people want deep sea critters models. <laughs> Probably best to wait for GW to release the models first. That's interesting though. I've never seen the Wrath of King stuff. I'm going to quickly Google that so I can have a look after the stream. Uh, Wrath of Kings. There we go. Um, the 50s film 300 Spartans is a better representation of them. I haven't seen that. I probably should watch that one. And garbage. They'd probably keep ordaining the same colours of the chamber that they've fallen from. I'll be all corrupted in chaos -y. The spear. Uh, Zyphus. I don't think the Zyphus was a spear. That's why I thought it was a sword. Let me just Google it again. Uh, it's a double-edged, one-handed, Iron Age, straight sword, short sword used by the ancient Greeks. It was a secondary battlefield weapon for the Greek armies after the Dory or the Javelin. Uh, regarding the elves, I'm more concerned with the elves Tyrion and Teclis are leading, which was mentioned that they have taken an angelic form. Oh, Stonecast Prosecute is also having an angelic form of sorts. That would be cool. I know Rachel would lose it if there was some angel high elves. She would definitely be all over them, and I probably would as well. I like anything with wings, but Rachel normally bagges them first. But they would have to make them different. I mean, the Stormcast Prosecutors are very... Um, they're, they've got technical wings, haven't they? They're like blades, rather like blades of metal, rather than feathers. So just by giving the... High elf stuff, feathered wings. It would be enough of a distinction for me to to see a difference. If they give them techno wings, then yeah, that's just the same. I did like in the in the books as well. Actually, the Stormcast prosecutors are really cool. They're like scouts. They send them out to go and look ahead in the battlefield, but their wings are like retractable, not retractable, but they fold them up behind them when they land and things. Just the way they describe them, I really like the prosecutors. This um, paint palette cam comes out all right. Let us know if you think it's worth me doing this. We've got a little Phil made this little contraption to hold it in. I've got my little towel behind the paint palette, so it's easy enough to use while I'm streaming. And I can move the actual box. You can see I'm moving it now, and it's I'm literally turning it side to side, and it's hardly moving. It's a very good design. Well done, Phil. Not that you're here. But in spirit, well done, Phil. Um, Sophie, what are you working on? What are you painting? And if anybody else is painting, let me know what you're working on as well. Better yet, put pictures up either on the forum or Facebook. And tag me into it as well if you're going to do that. <laughs> because for some reason, not everything seems to show up. Uh, Polos, I, okay, you learn something new every day. I do learn something new every day. Um, but I'm glad that you've discovered another weapon now. <laughs> I don't know what the spear was called. Just need room to remember it all. <laughs> Birdman from Flash Gordon. Gordon's alive. Yeah, but like a very elven version of it. So the, I'll go back to the Realm Gate stuff. I know that I've been talking about it quite a bit, but uh, they were good. Were good. The, uh, the basic story is quite straightforward from the beginning, so it's not a, not a spoiler, but Sigmar is sending the, his Stormcast chamber, the, uh, what were they called? The Hallowed Knights, I think, to go to the, to go and find Nagash and talk to him because he wants to try and work with Nagash again. Because what did happen is, in the beginning, Stormcasts, uh, well, Sigmar and Nagash and Gorkamorka, all of them worked together. And then Nagash and Gorkamorka ended up betraying Sigmar. So Sigmar got really annoyed and shut the gates and left him to it. But now, Chaos is back and Sigmar's realised that he needs to work with Nagash. And Nagash is basically like, nope, nope, nope. He's a big child. He doesn't want to talk. However, um, you know, Sigmar doesn't really care. He's still trying to get Nagash to work with him and apologize. Not apologize, but, you know, say there's bigger things to, to worry about than our little disagreement. 
Oh, I'm getting. Why is that beeping away? Fine. So that's the the the, the main story. You know, a, a whole chamber has been sent out to find the gash, but they've been they've been taken ages to find the the realm gates just to get to him. It's difficult, just that step. Uh, and along the way, they find Manfred. There's a lot of fighting between chaos in there. The the main enemy in the Realmgate Wars is obviously chaos, but it does show up a lot in the small skirmishes and stuff that happen in there. Some of the fight scenes are quite cool as well. And like I said, the voice acting is brilliant. Ogres make an appearance in there, which is nice if you collect ogres. Not the... Um, what to call it ones, not the Thunder Tusk, Frost, what are they called, Frost something? Normal Ogres appear, Beastmen appear, Iron Jaws do, there's a little grot in there which is quite cool, it's got a nice little accent. <laughs> uh, what else, there's vampires, now there's different types of vampires as well which is quite interesting, you've got these weaker ones which can't control themselves around the blood, so and they're the ones that become, in the old world, when vampires used to, to have too much blood and they went crazy, they'd turn into monstrosities, they'd turn into vargles, and they were just uncontrollable and they'd just be going crazy. So it's nice that um, there, there are still different vampire types in the Age of Sigmar. And obviously Manfred sees himself as above all of them. He's like the bloodline of kings. He's on the same level as Nagash in his own head. Um, and the other thing as well is the giant uh, dread abyssals that the Manfred and Arkan fly around on. And they sound so cool. It's almost like his own little private taxi. Every five minutes he just jumps on the back of it and just flies off somewhere and does something. I'm trying to think what else pops up in that series. Uh, there's a really cool warrior, uh, a female warrior. She, um, there's a bunch of civilians that are getting attacked by marauders, and um, normally it's you've got the damsel in distress, but they've changed it around. This woman's like, I mean, she doesn't get into a whole lot of fighting. None of the civilians did, but she's definitely got the fight in her. She uh, got giant hammer and she just wants to go and fight stuff. And the stormcast are like, yeah, yeah, you can fight if they get past us. She kind of just goes, yeah, okay, fine. I'll just sit and wait. But it's nice to see that they've put some female, strong female characters in there rather than the normal damsel in distress. And uh, some of the male characters are quite cowardly. Oh, another really cool bit was there's uh, ghouls in there. The crypt ghouls. And it was nice to see them portray them. Because th what happens with the ghouls is they don't see themselves as dead. So they, some of them are like old families, like noble families and kings and, and queens and princes and stuff. So when they die, they just don't see themselves as dead. So there's this part in there where, I mean, there's a lot, but I'm not going to talk about all of it. But um, Manfred comes across this, this whole group of ghouls and it's led by this king uh, and he's a ghoul king, but he doesn't think he's dead. So... He's like putting a, a stopwatch into his pocket that doesn't exist. He's like pretending he's just under an illusion. and All of his ghouls are under the same illusion. They all think they're in this court and they're all working for a king and it's all... Um, but what they're actually doing is instead of eating like nice food or, you know, normal food, they're just gnawing on bones and things and they're covered in hide and... It's just this weird illusion that they've all got themselves under. So they see themselves as this big noble... Um, army and they're just living in a pit like a destroyed abandoned city and they still see it as this giant palace that's been you know had millions of inhabitants but it's not been like that for you know hundreds of years I just think that's awesome and it's just it adds so much character to them as well and when and you know when you see the models you just think oh they're just ghouls it's like 
Fallout ghouls. They're not like they're okay, but when you add that to it, where they that you think they think they're like nobles, you can do so much with that. You could you could do them in different poses, like elegant poses, where they're like going out to battle on the back of a horse or something, but they're just riding this evil, ugly beast thing and having blood and bones dripping from them. I just think that's really cool. So Manfred almost, he, he like tricks a lot of people. But another thing that I didn't realise with Manfred is he um, he does keep his word, you know, his, his word is a lot. And most, and all the way through it, it's like you can't trust a vampire sort of thing, but it is good. Highly recommended. I wasn't thinking I was going to be as interested as I was, but it's... Not as good as the Horus Heresy, but I've only listened to a, a short amount of it. Like, I've probably listened to one equivalent audiobook, you know, with the length of the, what they are. And I just need to listen to more of them from whoever creates them. Do, 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 do. Right, let's go to the chat a little bit more. Uh, Ian Stanford, painting a lot of grey, one warlord titan. That's what you're working on, Ian. I mean, you've got a lot of work to do there. Probably more than me. Wolf Wraith is working on Mortarian currently. He just has so much detail. Yeah, and it, I mean, I was saying about like this Beastman. Like, look at the the amount of detail. It, with, with the newer models, you can generally get away with putting a base coat on it and picking out the details. On this, look how much detail. This is just one of the models. Let me show you, actually. So we'll get two models, and bearing in mind there's about six or seven different variants of just Bestigore alone, but you can see the difference between these. They've got different chests, like waists. This one's got bones hanging down from a rope with a little bit of gold on it. This one's just got rope with a bit of a gold amulet. Then their chests are all different, so this one's got like a little stone amulet hanging down from a necklace. This one's got a bone amulet. They've got hairy chests, they've got metal and cloth in different places. That's just the front of the model. Then you've got, you turn it to the sides. Uh, all the arms are different. There's about four, four or five different variants. So you can see the axes have all got different details on them. They've got different areas where they're actually holding the axes. So the straps that go around the weapons are all different sized apart. And then the heads are so different as well. Um, but there's a lot going off on these models. You can see there's like on this side, there's a bone down this side. There's a dagger on this one. Grab another one here. This is the the standard bearer. And you see there's a bone on the center of there. There's And there's a pouch on here. They're all different. So normally, like if you're painting an army, if you're painting space marines, you can spray them all, you know, the main power armor color, whatever it is, and then pick out the shoulder trims, pick out the chest pieces or whatever. It's, it's a lot more straightforward than this where you can't just dry brush the model. I was thinking, oh, I'll just dry brush them brown. It'll be easy. But looking at it, there's just so many different colors right next to each other. Now like you've got silver, you've got gold, you've got brown, you've got black, you've got another brown, another gold, another silver. That You just can't dry brush these and get the, the decent effect. So you've got to paint them, all these little details individually, and it just takes so long. Whereas some of the newer models are not like that. They're a lot easier to paint. So I do wish I was just doing a newer army in a way. Uh, Baz Watkins, long time lurker of your channel. Really liking this paint along. I'm working on my 30k custodians at the moment. That's awesome. Thank you for commenting, Baz. I appreciate that you watched our stuff for a while and you have commented. The custodians are really nice. I've got three of the bikes to do, but not until these are at least done. Uh, and I'll maybe just have a quick break before I start the next project, but I won't be doing them as custodians. Uh, Rachel's got her 40k custodians army. So we may add some of those bikes to that. But it's good to see that um, they're allowing the 30k models to be used in 40k as well because those 30k custodians are amazing the dreadnoughts and the the vehicle you know the vehicles i'm not a big fan of actually uh, i quite like the flyer but i'm not a fan of the i just don't like the shapes of it and i know that's a quite a controversial thing to say because so many people love the custodians vehicles but 
I have to say it's not for me. I, I quite like the Macarius, I think it's called, the Imperial Guard tanks. Um, I like the uh, Mechanicus ones. I like, really like the, the ones that look like trains. So I think it's just my taste in the vehicles. I have to say I do like the Sisters of Battle transports. They're quite good. But it's a bit of a shame. Whereas I do really like the bikes for the Custodes. Uh, and the Dreadnoughts look cool. But as an army. If the vehicles were a bit different, I'd probably be doing a bigger army of them. Because I'm not as much of a fan. I can't see me expanding it. Because in the end I've got a I have to paint them for Rachel. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Frank just posted on the Facebook community page. Let's have a look. Uh, Paula should be working on Shades Fire Fire Slayers, but got a chest infection, so just list chilling listening to you, mate. That's fair enough, Paula. Maybe you should get some sleep and get a little bit better. I do appreciate you listening away. Ah, Phil's paint posted the sponge cloths on the Facebook page as well. There we go, Frank Storm, Terminator, work in progress. Let's see if I can do this. I'll get this under here instead, actually. There we go, look at that. Oh, there we go. Really nice, Frank. I like the tentacles you've used, actually. I don't think that's, is that a conversion? Or is that part of the model? It looks good either way. Frost and Fist, I really love, uh, really enjoy your law talk, my brother. Well, thank you, Frost and Fist. I don't know a lot, but I'm learning more and more, and it's quite interesting. And Paulus is saying, the Flesh Eater court law is brilliant. It is, and um, without the law, I wouldn't be interested in even considering to play them, but now I am. Right, and uh, <laughs> Paulus, why the dislike? I don't know, that dislike, I, I put the show up and I think the dislike was the first thing that happened and it's ridiculous, but it's engagement, it's all engagement. Right, I'm, I've kind of not done much. I've almost painted two models in an hour and a half and I was doing the skin, I was doing 30 minutes to 40 minutes per skin on the model, so it's definitely slower. My phone keeps pinging. Uh, maybe if I close that. There we go. Uh, right, Sophie Steams, I will say that one of the best written relationships is Vlad and Isabella von Karstein. What started as a marriage of convenience, revenge becomes true love. Even in undeath, Vlad does his best to save the love of his unlife. Yeah. I do like that as well, and I hope they bring them back into Age of Sigmar. I don't know if they have yet. Um, but they they were really cool, and I did like... I, I like the whole von Karstein family. I just thought it was brilliant. I, I think it was when Vlad came back and uh, Manfred was like, uh, which one was it? Sigmar's Blood, one of that, uh, the older books. Uh, it was really, really cool. Definitely worth reading some of the older stuff, even though it's not necessarily relevant now. But obviously the old world all leads on to Age of Sigmar. So it's not like it's not related. It's still worth reading and listening to some of the older stuff from the old world so that you can relate to when it happens or what the update is in Age of Sigmar. So, um, I think I'm, I'm probably done. I'm going to go and crack on with painting offline for a little bit. I hope that I've given you a little bit of something to do for an hour and 45 minutes. And I'll try and do these more often. If people like it, uh, let us know in the comments if you're watching this back. If it's something that you enjoy, then I'll definitely try and do more of these. Maybe one a week, maybe two a week, we'll see. And I might do some on Twitch and and mix it between the two, but it depends what people like. Uh, Baz, I fully understand you're not liking the vehicles. They are very much like Marmite. You love them or you hate them. As for the bikes, I much prefer the 40k version over the Gaia Falcon pattern. Yeah, I, I, same. Same thing. I think flesh-eater carts are on the cards for me. 
I think they should be on the on the cards for everyone after listening to the law. And definitely, I'll um, just Google which which one of the books, Round Gate books, has got that in it. Uh, the the Flesh Eater Courts, because it's worth listening to, because it will it will make you just start them there and then. Um, other than that, thank you to everyone who has watched. Thank you to everyone who has done a thumbs up on the video as well. It is a random one. I wasn't expecting anybody to turn up. So f for the fact that so many of you have turned up to chat to me, it's been really nice. And um, thank you to Martin Dix for the donation again. And uh, I think obviously tonight there's the live battle report. So this one will only go up for so long and the live battle report will be up later on. So anybody wanting to, wanting to watch an Age of Sigmar battle, um, be sure to tune in later on this evening. I think it's at eight o'clock. But double check it. You can schedule. You can um, tick it now. So if you go onto our channel, you can schedule it or whatever it is. Make sure you get a notification when it goes live. Um, other than that, everyone have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll probably see you next on Saturday. So see you later. Thanks again. <laughs>